Floyd, Money, Mayweather. Whether you hate them or love them, there's one thing that cannot be refuted. He is one of the most iconic defensive boxers to ever grace the sport. And with his undefeated record, that does nothing but cement his legacy even greater. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Band Clap, and we in the building with another short video. So, amidst the fight that went on yesterday, even though Floyd is out of his prime, it still shows that the technique that he's mastered out of all of the many years of his boxing career still shine through. And upon making this video, I haven't been doing nothing but watching Floyd Mayweather highlights and different things regarding his style. And then I started to think to myself, when it comes to a lot of us on this spiritual journey, due to lack of the proper defenses, due to the lack of proper knowledge and things like that, we end up finding ourselves in physical and even spiritual attacks. So what if there was a way to where you can put some of these principles that Floyd Mayweather used to have his 50 and 0 boxing record and apply this to the spiritual world so that you got all of these different tools and things to where you can stop things, catastrophic things, from happening to you physically because you were able to nip that thing in the bud on the spiritual plane before it even got to you on the physical plane. So in this video, I just want to touch on three major things that can make you a spiritual Floyd Mayweather. Number one, knowing who you are. Knowing what type of warrior and knowing what type of fighter that you want to be and start walking in that purpose. Now, they always say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Now, in Floyd Mayweather's case, his father was already a very, very established boxer. So as soon as Floyd expressed that love and he expressed that wanting as a child to be a boxer just like his father. His father along with other people along the way started to train him with many different styles and stuff like that. Some styles that he wouldn't even use to later on in his career. So when you're on this spiritual journey and you're serious about it and you start walking in that your higher self, just like with Floyd Mayweather, your higher self is going to start to manifest itself in physical forms, being certain elders that's going to give you different knowledge and help you along the way. Certain really, really close friends that's always there to correct you and check you when they see that you're going the wrong way. And if you listen and you go the distance, these things are going to be the catalyst to propel you forward in being the spiritual Floyd Mayweather. In my videos, I'm always giving thanks and I'm always talking about the different elders and the different teachers in my life that made me the spiritual person that I am today. From my dad to Ocon, even to elders like Bobby Hemme and Phil Valentine and Dr. Deborah Blair, which I was gracefully able to meet in the astral plane. And this is something that provided me with a very, very strong foundation and also with a slew of different tools that a lot of them I didn't even really start using until later on in my life. Step two, recognizing and perfecting the tools that are in your arsenal. Now, like I said earlier, when you take a look at the early 
stages of Floyd Mayweather's career. It involved a lot of knockouts and things like that. But as he got older and he ended up hurting his hands and stuff like that, he had to learn a different style of boxing if he wanted to stay dominant in that realm. So he reached into his bag of tricks and he pulled out what you were recognized as the Philly shell style of boxing. Something that his father taught him as early as eight years old. And he wouldn't even use this style until he got older. And this is when we started to see a more defensive style of boxing from Floyd Mayweather, where it wasn't necessarily about knocking the opponent out. It was more about using their own strengths against them. And since Floyd Mayweather has very, very extreme cardio, his cardio is so good that he's able to bob and weave out of different punches. He's able to use the full ring to his advantage. And this is what helps him get out of complex situations in the boxing ring. Now, common and regular people who don't really understand the science of boxing and stuff like that, they will say that, oh, he's just dancing around. He's just hugging and all of this stupid stuff. When at the end of the day, a win is a win, no matter how you do it, no matter what style or what trick that you would use, as long as it's not illegal, a win is a win. So how does this equate to you being a spiritual Floyd Mayweather? Well, what this means is you should always be on a quest for knowledge, learning different spiritual systems, learning different forms of spiritual warfare, whether it's spell, whether it's candle magic, whether it's sigils, whether it's the Orishas, whether it's the Goetia, whether it's learning about the Kalipov, whether it's learning about certain meditation techniques where you can attack things on the spiritual plane before it can even harm you or even get to you on the physical plane. Now, when we think about spiritual warfare, a lot of us that is coming from this music media manipulation, we're thinking about some type of Harry Potter where you got this magic wand and, and you're casting spells and all of that. But no, spiritual warfare can be as simple as you being spiritually open and learning about different spiritual systems and you get tested by a nagging Christian or a nagging Hebrew Israelite and their goal is to shun you, lower your spirits, lower your vibration to try to pierce your aura into making you feel like what you're doing is wrong and what they're doing is right. Trying to impose their will on you, trying to impose their belief systems on you. That, my friends, is also spiritual warfare. Now, what if that same situation happened, but you yourself was raised up Christian and you took the time to read the Bible frontwards and backwards and fully understand what that Bible means. And then when you get into that debate or whatever with that Christian, instead of you being on the offensive, opening yourself up for attack and stuff like that, you use your Philly shell. You use your Philly shell offense. And what you do is you communicate to them in a way that they understand you using your Bible knowledge, understanding that a lot of Christians that come at you with different things haven't read the Bible frontwards and backwards, because if they did, they wouldn't be questioning you on what you're doing and you're keeping your calm. You're not getting mad. 
You're not getting rambunctious. You're not getting angry. Just like in the Bible stories where the devil would tempt Jesus. And when you come at them on that type of level, showing that you have no fear, showing that you study and you've shown yourself approved, they can do nothing but flee just like in the Bible when the devil had to flee. Let's talk about another example of this as well, of being able to know who you are, being able to know the different spiritual tools that were allotted to you and you having knowledge of these tools and being able to use these things in your physical world to keep from physical things happening to you. So we all know about car insurance. We know that car insurance is a very, very pivotal thing that you need for your car and stuff like that. But let's let's be honest. Car insurance is something that you need after you've already got into the accident. And who's to say that you will even be alive after that accident to even file a car insurance claim. So what are some tools? What are some things that you can do on the spiritual plane to better prevent um, accidents and things like that from happening into your life? Well, today is Monday. And we know that when we talk about the Loa, um, even when we talk about the Orishas, we know that Legba plays a huge part in Monday. Now, there's a lot of different um, descriptions on Legba and Eshu. So I'm only going to talk about this from my, from from the way I operate um, and, and the way that I interpret and use the energies of these particular deities. With using the energies of Legba and Eshu together, there's many different benefits when we're talking about driving. We know that these deities in their own way represents the opener of the way. And depending on the spiritual system, except for um, the Haitian spiritual system, where you also have Metcalfu that represents the crossroads. When using these energies of Metcalfu and Eshu, and Legba together with driving. And we know that Anubis rolls with them as well. Now you have spiritual car insurance. So when you have certain symbologies of these deities in your car, this is what keeps you from getting in accidents. This is what keeps you from having um, unsuspected collisions and things like that from happening in the physical world, along with many other benefits, like you being able to clearly get your message across when having debates or trying to teach and stuff like that. Opening up the way so that your manifestations can happen a lot faster. And always having a spiritual attack dog on your side, just in case you get into some spiritual warfare or you get into a situation that might end up being physical and you know in your heart of hearts that you were innocent in this situation like i always say the reason why that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper is because when you're moving in innocence and entities um spiritual uh, parasites and things like that try to form weapons in the spiritual world to try to harm you. You have a impenetrable aura around you because you're working in purity, because you're working in innocence. And this impenetrable aura that you have around you, it stops weapons from prospering against you. Just like when Floyd Mayweather when he do that, that lean, it's like an impenetrable, it's like an impenetrable defense. And I've seen so many clips where when he do that and the boxer tries to hit him, 
the way that boxer missed is so embarrassing. And now that boxer is open for a counterattack. And that's how you should always be. When you're trying to be the spiritual Mayweather, it's always about having an efficient defense and being able to counterattack when needed. And the counterattack is always going to land. It's always going to land. And this doesn't always result in a knockout punch, but it's going to daze and, and, and make the entity dizzy enough for you to plan your next move. And this is where I go into the last but not least tip that can make you a spiritual Floyd Mayweather. And this is the biggest thing that Floyd hangs his hat on when it comes to his career and stuff like that. And this is adaptability. Always being able to adjust on the fly. And in order for you to develop this, you're always going to have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations so you can figure out how to, number one, you won't have no fear when you're, when you put yourself in these situations because you know who you are, you know? And then the second thing, the reason why you're able to be so adaptive and, and you're able to adjust to any situation is because you got so many tools in your arsenal. So if, if somebody tries to, to hit you with a, um, with an attack, you know, you can go into your, uh, spiritual arsenal and you can adjust and adapt and hit them with something that's even more primordial than what they hit you with. And now you're victorious and Floyd Mayweather, he's shown so much how he's able to adjust on the fly. I was looking at this um, match between him and Mosley. I think it was Mosley or Mosby. And then this other guy. And also the matchup between Floyd Mayweather and Zab Judah. Now, we know that Zab Judah has a, a real, real fast, real fast left hand. You know, his jabs are a lot quicker than Floyd Mayweather. So the first few rounds... You know, Floyd was losing. It looked like he was about to lose the fight. But one thing about Floyd, he's always good at adjusting. And the reason why he can adjust, because throughout his career, he's learned so many boxing styles. He's learned so many ways to outsmart his opponent. There's even times where he will watch tapes of the opponent's older fights to see their different style and pick it apart. And you know, this is this is a testament of you just learning how to be a master tactician of the different tools that you have and being able to adjust and use whatever tool is necessary for you to get the job done. No matter what people say about you, no matter how people will perceive it, no matter what somebody else would think about it, the key is did you get the W? The key is, were you able to stop something on the spiritual plane before it reached you on the physical plane? And that, my friends, is how you can be a spiritual Floyd Mayweather. So I hope that um, this was enlightening for you. I hope that I was able to uh, give you some motivation, give you something that you can think about for your spiritual journey. As you all know, if you want to get a reading from me, www.bandclaptv.com. And also on that website, you can sign up for my shadow work class, which is extremely important because that first step, knowing who you are, when you go within and you start doing that shadow work, you're gonna come out knowing who you are, which is extremely important. You need to know what type of fighter you are. Are you a more offensive fighter? Are you a, are you more defensive? Are you more in the middle? You have to know these things. And then you have to know a little bit about every style. 
because the different entities that you may come across they may have a different style that could be yours you know but if you know a little bit about their style then you can adapt and you can adjust where you can take some of your style take some of their style and beat them at their own game just like how Floyd Mayweather did his whole boxing career so I hope that you all got something out of this this was another band clap tv short and we're out and no matter what you've got to stay shining all right y'all see y'all again.